It's the producer's responsibility to bring a pig to the plant that is easy to handle. But the plant has to remove all of the distractions that will make pigs balk and refuse to move through the facility. Pigs refused to move up this chute because they could see the reflection off the floor. They would back up, back up, back up. In fact, this plant failed several restaurant audits until they changed their lighting. All they had to do to fix this was move a light on the ceiling to eliminate the reflection. You've got to get down and get the pig's eye view. Another thing that will make pigs balk and refuse to move is air blowing in their face. You cannot have air blowing in the face of the animals. Now, pigs tend to move towards the light. In this picture, you've got pigs moving towards an open door. If you're inside a building, you can use lamps to attract pigs into chutes. However, they will not go into a light that's glaring in their face. Here's a good example of using indirect lighting to attract pigs into the entrance of the chute. In this picture, we've got pigs balking at a white plastic strip that separates a concrete floor from a black rubber floor. It's really important to reduce contrast. Animals are really sensitive to contrast. They'll balk at shiny things. You need to get down in chutes and see if they're seeing people through the chutes because that can make them difficult to handle. Here's an example of another flooring problem. You're going again from a concrete floor to a metal floor. Wherever there is change, the animal notices that. People at the plant need to work on eliminating these distractions because distractions like this can make good handling impossible. When you build a new stockyard for pigs, you want to put the drains outside the fence so that the animals don't have to walk over the drains because that tends to also make them stop and balk. Now, a pig will look right at the things that scare it. When he's calm, he'll look right at it. When he's all excited and screeching around, he's not going to look at it. He's too scared. This brings up another thing. Keep animals calm. Calm pigs are much easier to handle than excited pigs because after they get excited, it takes 20 minutes to half an hour for them to calm back down. So the secret is don't get them excited. But use a calm pig to find the distractions in your plant and eliminate them. It's really important to get electric prods out of people's hands. It's not their primary driving tool. A little flag like this or maybe a little, um, little small stick would be the primary tool and then you pick up the electric prod only when you need it and then you put it back down again. Here's another, some other examples of some good driving aids for pigs. Um, the plastic paddle stick is commercially available. And another thing that sometimes works well are these small flags that construction workers use for the flag man. And if you just move that alongside the pig's head, you can turn the pig. The people are getting really creative about coming up with good driving aids you know, in order to reduce electric prods. And you also get the benefit of less PSE. Plants that have worked hard on their handling have found that their PSE and their pork quality problems have been greatly reduced. That means they have more meat for export and more meat for their primary premium markets. This is another um, device that's been invented for moving pigs down large alleys. Uh, the plants call it the witch's cape. It's a piece of plastic, plasticized tarpaulin material that's stiffened on each end and it's sort of like a big matador cape and you just use that to move the pigs down the alley. This is just a view of it from the front. And you can see that you have two sections there that are about 30 inches long that are stiffened on the top, but the middle section is completely flexible. Then you can also fold it in half and just use half of it. Works really great. Uh, another plant um, wanted to use pig boards, but regular pig boards are too heavy to use in a plant. So they came up with a real lightweight plastic pig board that they could carry around. And when it comes to slappers, you need to be very careful with slappers. Slapping pigs can sometimes cause bruises. If you have to make a little noise, slap the slapper on the panel. But we need to be reducing the noise that people make. You know, now that the plants have been really working hard on their handling, they have found that yelling and screaming just gets the pigs excited. Just stay calm and then the pigs are going to stay calm. Non-slip flooring is essential for good animal handling. One of the biggest problems in plants is slippery floors. This floor has been roughened up with a concrete grooving machine. This is a real easy way to make floors non-slip. 
And this is a really unique floor I saw over in Denmark at the truck unloading dock. It's a rubberized mat with grooves in it. Worked just great. Now this is very bad. Sharp edges that can bruise. Edges with a sharp diameter can bruise. We need to eliminate these sort of things throughout the plant. Now this is really clever. This vertical sliding door has been equipped with a piece of conveyor belting along the bottom to prevent bruises. The whole bottom, 20 inches of the door, is just a curtain of conveyor belting. Pigs think it's solid so they don't go through it. And then if the door is closed on the pigs, it's not going to hurt them. Many plants now are, are cutting off the bottom part of their doors and putting in these curtains. And it's greatly reduced um, damage on the backs. You need to have solid sides in your crowd pen and a solid crowd gate. Also, the sides on the rakes going up to the stunner should be solid because pigs have wide angle vision and you want to block seeing distractions outside the chute. This diagram shows the right and the wrong way to lay out a pig race system. If you lay it out wrong, it's just not going to work. Please follow this diagram. Now, you must have an abrupt entrance going into the pig chute because if you just make a funnel like this, they jam in it. You think a pig's going to back off to let another pig go? Uh-uh, not piggies. They don't have manners. You make an abrupt entrance, then two pigs are not able to jam. This is a round crowd pen with a motorized gate on it. You can also make a crowd pen with just a lower, smaller gate that you can just work with your hands. The diagram that I showed previously can be made either as a motorized crowd pen or one with a gate that people just push around by hand. This shows good handling. The crowd pen is filled half full. I cannot emphasize enough the importance of moving small groups and filling your crowd pen half full. Also, the staging area that leads up to the crowd pen should be filled half full. Pigs need room to turn. We also need to be renaming these crowd pens that go up into the single file the passing through pen. Don't give them a chance to turn around. Just bring them right up there and let them pass through and run up the chute. Now, sheep's a different story. Sheep's like siphoning water. You never want to break the flow. So you can go ahead and fill it up. This is a species difference. Most of the things that I tell you are the same for pigs, cattle, and sheep. But even with sheep, don't stuff them in there. But remember, pigs and cattle, it's small, separate groups. And for sheep, you can get away with having a ramp in your system. But for pigs, it's really bad. If you're building a new facility for handling pigs, let's make everything flat. Get rid of as many ramps as possible, especially going up to the stunner. Chutes and alleys that lead up to the stunner will work best if they're level. Another thing that's bad in this picture, this guy's got green gloves hanging over the side of the chute. I'd like to ban green gloves. I've seen a lot of problems with pigs balking in the chutes because they can see gloves hanging down through the chute. 